Hey everyone, Dan Vuksanovich here with WhySuckAGuitar.com and today we are going to examine one of guitardom's most annoying problems. And that is when your pick gets stuck on the strings. I hate this problem. I used to have this problem and it's incredibly annoying. It seems like it should be so easy, such a simple thing to fix, but it's really not. It's also very debilitating, if, especially if you're going to play live. Because this is not the sort of problem where, oops, I missed one note and I can just keep going. And in the mix, it's, it's not going to be a big deal. If you are playing with any sort of speed, any sort of precision, if you are playing a passage where you're trying to get from point A to point B and your pick gets stuck in the middle, it's a blown tire. And that can be really problematic. So like I said, I used to have this problem. I fixed it. I'm going to give you a bunch of tools that you can use to examine your own technique. So let's get started and let's fix it. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the pick itself. Now, I don't know what kind of pick thickness you are using, but there are basically three different thickness bands. There are thin picks, there are medium picks, and there are thick or heavy picks. Um, usually anything one millimeter thick or thicker is considered heavy. Or thick. Um, so if you are using a heavier pick and you're having this problem, depending on what kind of music you play, you might be able to lessen the effects of this problem by using a thinner pick. Thick picks have no give. It's very difficult for me to bend this pick. Thinner picks bend more and they bend easier. So when you hit the strings, it's much less likely for them to get stuck because they'll just flex a little bit and they'll let you through the string. So if you play folk, if you play a lot of acoustic music and you're strumming a lot, if you play funk and you want that kind of percussive chucka 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 sound, a medium or even a thin pick might be something that you could look at and it might actually be better for the kind of music that you play. Now, I am in no way recommending some sort of pick thickness revolution where everyone runs out and gets a thin or a medium pick. There are a bunch of really good reasons to use a thick pick and I happen to use a thick pick myself. But I did want to bring it up in case it's something that you want to experiment with. All right, so let's get out the guitar for the rest of these and next let's talk about pick grip. And there are three elements of pick grip that I want to talk about. The first one is how loosely or tightly are you gripping your pick? Now, if you're gripping your pick too loosely, your pick is going to get stuck because you're not firm enough to get the pick through the string, either on the downstroke or the upstroke. So if your fingers are too floppy, um, that catching can happen. On the other hand, if your pick grip is too tight, then it's very likely that your arm is going to seize up, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, and you're not going to have the kind of fluid motion that is going to allow you to get through the string. And you will get stuck on the strings for that reason. Let's also talk a little bit about how you're supporting the edges of the pick. So most of us are edge pickers. And by that I mean that when we pick, we are not using the flat part of the pick. We are using an edge. So we've got the pick slightly on an angle and I've got this edge right here on a downstroke, and then I've got the opposite edge on an upstroke. Now, if you pick like that, you need to make sure that you're supporting the edge that is making contact with the string. So on a downstroke, that means that my thumb needs to support the edge of the pick that is in contact with the string. So if my thumb is not, you know, if my thumb is over here in the middle of the pick somewhere, it's going to be very difficult for me to control that edge. And then alternatively on the upstroke, I've got my index finger here that needs to support the opposite edge because it's the other edge of the pick that is making contact on an upstroke. Now, you can significantly reduce how tightly you need to grip the pick by just supporting the edges of the pick with your pick grip. So if you're in the middle, you're going to need to hold the pick really tight to make sure that it doesn't move too much when you go through the strings. But if you can support the edges of the pick, 
got my thumb wrapped around there a little bit, and then I've also got my index finger wrapped around the other edge so that when I pick up and down, that edge is, is that pick is bumping up against my thumb on the way down and then my index finger on the way up. And then something else to keep in mind is that your pick grip is not always going to be the same level of firmness. So if you've always got tension, if you're always gripping the pick with the same amount of firmness or, or tension, then you will eventually build up an unreasonable amount of tension in your picking hand and arm and it will seize up. So virtuoso players, they are very good at kind of micro relaxing in very small spaces. So it's something that you can't see, but it's something that you can learn how to feel. So if you've got a passage that has, say, uh, eighth notes and 16th notes, so this sort of kind of metal rhythm that you hear all the time. And obviously the, the notes change. I'm not going to play in a, any of the actual songs for copyright reasons, but there's, there's a lot of that kind of six against four feel in, in metal songs. Y you need to be able to relax, shake it out a little bit when you play that eighth note because you have twice the amount of time and you don't have to play that upstroke. So that movement can be a little bit bigger. You should feel like you're throwing your, your hand and your pick at the string a little bit more when you're playing the eighth note versus when you've got the 16th notes going. So three aspects of pick grip. Number one, not too tight, not too loose. Number two, support the edges of the pick with your thumb and forefinger. Number three, a good pick grip is not consistent with it, the amount of firmness that you're using. So next let's talk about rhythm. And this is more for people who want to be able to build speed and not get the pick caught on the strings. In fact, trying to play faster than you can is one of the great ways that you can teach yourself how to get your pick caught on the strings. So if you want to play faster and you, you don't want to get your pick caught on the strings, one of the things that you're going to want to do is, is learn how to chunk. And rhythmic chunking is something that you need to be able to do because when you get past a certain speed, it becomes impossible for your brain to focus on every note that is passing by. So for example, if you get to 160 beats per minute with 16th notes, if you try to focus on every note, you're, you're, you're done. You're, it, it's not going to work. So you're not going to be able to keep up. And because you're trying to keep up and you're chasing that, that tempo, it's very likely that this is going to happen and you'll, you'll seize up a little bit your, your muscles and your pick will end up getting stuck on the string. So when you start to get into the 132, 138, 144 range with 16th notes, chunking helps. And what chunking is, is you focus on a group of notes, in this case, a beat's worth of notes, instead of each individual note. So this would be uh, chunks of four, and it can also help to accent every beat. So if I'm going to play a chunk of four, instead of thinking about one, two, three, four, I'm going to think about that's one. One, two, three, four. And eventually, when you get faster and faster, um, you'll want to start doing uh, groups of six. If you're playing, um, you know, a triplet sextuplet feel, and even groups of eight, at, if you're doing sixteenth notes at really high speeds, you know, in the, up up near two hundred beats per minute. All right. Next, let's talk about the way you present your arm to the guitar, or your 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 picking arm angle. And I'm not talking about your entire arm. I'm talking about between your elbow and your fingers. Now, the goal here is to not contort your wrist, um, fingers, elbow in, in any sort of strange way. 
Now, the, the, the stranger the contortion that you have, the more likely it is that you're going to put yourself in a position where either your downstroke is going to get caught because you don't have enough range of motion or you're getting tight or your upstroke is going to get caught because you don't have enough range of motion in that direction and or you're tight as well. So there's a great exercise that you can do to kind of test for this and that is to off the guitar, take your, your picking arm off the guitar and then with your, your arm pretty straight, straight and comfortable from your elbow to the tips of your fingers and then hold the pick, just rotate at the elbow. This is forearm rotation, rotate back and forth. Paul Gilbert refers to this as turning a key in a lock. It's pretty easy to do this when your arm is mostly straight and comfortably relaxed. Now take that and just put it on the guitar. That's a great way to hit the reset button to try and work out some of the contortions that might have evolved over time as you learned how to play the guitar. So next I want to talk about something that I term learning to fail. And this is an important concept to understand. If you, over the course of your guitar playing career, have gotten to the point where your pick is always getting stuck on the strings, it's important to understand that you taught yourself to do that. Now I'm not saying that because it's an insult, but the important thing is if you taught yourself to do that, you can teach yourself to not do it. It's going to be hard because you have all this bad muscle memory built up and you probably have some mental blockages where there's some, some fear. I know I'm going to get this, the, this pick caught on the strings and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's something that you have to move past by understanding that you are the one holding the pick. And if you are careful enough, especially at first, because you have to, you're going to have to slow way, way down to start untying these knots that you've tied for yourself, you're the one holding the pick. You can play in a way where the pick never gets stuck on the strings. Now, when I was at the Peabody Conservatory, my teacher, Julian Gray, said something to me that I will never forget. I was complaining during one of my lessons about the fact that I was sloppy and I'm always missing notes and songs. And he just kind of looked at me and he said, well, don't miss. And I had to think about it for a moment, but he, he had to explain basically the same thing to me. You're the one holding the guitar. You're the one who gets to decide when you play the next note. Is your left hand in place? Is your right hand on the right string? Take the time as you're preparing these new pieces and make sure that you don't miss. When you go play live, some notes you're going to miss, but when you're, when you're practicing at slow tempo and, and trying to make everything easy physically, it, it's up to you. And that's, that's what I want to relate to you here. It is up to you. You're the one with the pick in your hands. You can decide to play slower. You can decide to play with more care. You can decide to apply some of these tools that we've talked about today, and you can start to teach yourself to succeed instead of, starting to, instead of continuing to teach yourself to fail. I'd like to talk about release. And this is, this is a, a, a small change that I made to my picking technique. And it was right when I was starting to try to figure this whole thing out. And I said to myself, I'm going to make sure that I don't get caught on the strings. And what I did was I built a slight upward movement into every picking stroke. So by that, I mean my wrist comes up a little bit. And this is more, it's more evident when I'm picking slowly. And it, it goes away. It goes away when I'm picking faster. But no matter how small that movement gets, or when it, even if it actually disappears, I still have this feeling of fluidity with my wrist, where it's never getting, getting rigid. Because for me, when this locks up, that's when the pick starts to get caught. So at slow speeds, when I was learning new songs, I would make sure that I was always literally lifting the pick out away from the strings while I was, while I was playing it. 
and it doesn't have to take away from your, your, your volume. So I can still, I can still get, you know, movement across. It's just that while the, the string is traveling along the edge of the pick, I am consciously lifting the pick up and out of the area where it could end up getting caught. So that's an example of something that I've done. You don't have to do it, but if you think about the concept of learning to fail that I, that I talked about earlier, here's, here's a way that I decided that I was gonna learn to succeed. And I was gonna change something that I did and make sure that my pick wasn't gonna get caught. And after I was sure that my pick wasn't gonna get caught, then I would continue to figure out how to go from there. The last guitar-based topic, before we go back to some theoretical stuff, is gonna be fulcrum. And fulcrum is a point from which a lever operates. So you've got a couple options here for, for fulcrum point. One of them is right here. So strummers, folk players, funk players, a lot of them will just rest their forearm there on the guitar. The rest of the arm is just waving around and it makes it very easy to make large movements and hit a lot of strings at the same time. So forearm rotation, heavy fulcrum point. And that's the kind of motion that it creates. Now, if you're doing more solo lines, you might want to experiment with putting some part of your arm, hand, wrist on the bridge. This gets the wrist more involved, makes the movement smaller. It allows you to be more precise. Now, this is one of those areas where there is not really one right answer. You probably watch some videos out there where there are folks that insist there is only one right answer, but I promise you, if you go and watch a lot of great players, you're gonna see a lot of different techniques with different fulcrum points. The, the craziest one might be Michelangelo Badio, who, in addition to how he moves, jams his fingers into the body of the guitar below the strings. He does, he's a major, he's a major, major user of anchors. He anchors his fingers and a lot of guitar teachers, players will tell you that anchoring is a major no-no, but Michelangelo Badio has one of the most monstrous uh, picking techniques on the planet. So you go to Michelangelo Badio and tell him that anchoring is wrong. So I don't say that so you'll anchor. I don't say that so you'll use one fulcrum point or the other, but I'm always trying to make the point that you need to find something that works for you and you need to understand what it is that works. Because if you find something that works and you don't, you're not aware of the fact that it is working, the next day when you pick up the guitar, you might forget and then you're back to square one and you'll have to figure it out all over again. So keep your fulcrum point in mind. Does it feel better when you're just swinging your arm from up here? Does it feel better when you are kind of moving from the wrist here? And are, are you at all resting your, your fingers here uh, on the fretboard, on the, on the guitar body to help you with, with stability? No one right answer, you gotta figure it out for yourself, but now you have the tools. Okay, last thing is internalization. And really all this means is reps and good reps, reps where you're successful, not reps where the pick gets stuck on the string. Every time your pick gets stuck on the string, you're learning to fail. Every time your pick doesn't get stuck on the string, you're learning to succeed. So what you wanna do is, at first it's gonna be conscious, and you're gonna need to make sure that every picking stroke you make, that pick doesn't get stuck. But after a while, when you build up enough positive reps, you're gonna to start to internalize those motions. And that's where things can get fun because that's where you can start doing things like chunking, playing faster, and layering other techniques on top of now your picking technique where your pick isn't getting stuck on the strings anymore. Okay then, we've covered a whole lot of ground here and I've given you a bunch of tools to use. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a comment section down below if you're on my blog, there's also a comment section down below. So let me know how things are going for you. If you're having problems, let's talk about it. Let's get a conversation going. 
If you have things that you found that have helped you, put them in the comments and let's try and make this video and this blog post into a central hub where anyone who wants to solve this problem can come and there is an abundance of information. I'll put as, I'm putting as much of it as I can out there to start, but uh, cr crowdsourcing is an amazing thing. So keep the recommendations coming. Let's have a conversation about it and let's make sure that anyone who wants to make sure that they don't get the pick stuck on the strings anymore can come here and have the tools they need to figure out how to do that.